What is the Eastern Orthodox position on the theory of evolution? Is there anything that we can learn from the early church fathers? Throughout church history, there have been a number of different positions and doctrines about creation. But after the publication of Darwin's book on the origin of species in the middle of the 19th century, many things changed. There were several different responses and a number of different key figures involved in trying to interpret the theory of evolution from an Eastern Orthodox perspective. So that's what we're going to talk about today on the Science and Faith Podcast. The Eastern Orthodox Church's response to the theory of evolution can be divided into kind of two camps the incompatibilists and the compatibilists. The incompatibilists see the theory of evolution as incompatible with Eastern Orthodox teaching, whereas the compatibilists, obviously, see the theory of evolution as compatible with the theory of evolution. And so first, let's talk about the incompatibilist position. That position is most um, mostly held by very, very traditional Eastern Orthodox, um, very conservative Eastern Orthodox, and it's a view that was sort of popularized and, and, and encapsulated by Father Seraphim Rose, and he wrote a book uh, essentially defending the uh, historical interpretation of the book of Genesis. So he, he quotes very heavily in his book from uh, the early church fathers regarding the interpretations, the literal interpretations of Genesis, the view of creation, um, God's nature, and things like that as it relates to um, uh, the nature and the, the natural world and the physical world. Um, he quotes very heavily also from, uh, from early church fathers, especially in, in particular in the interpretation of Genesis as being uh, a very literalistic and literal interpretation. And so uh, in his book, uh, he quotes, as I say, he quotes many, many uh, church fathers. Uh, what he does is he concentrates mostly on the theory of evolution as it relates to cosmology or cosmogony, that is uh, the idea of the evolution of origins. And so he's, he's very much opposed to the idea of of saying that there are natural forces or natural mechanisms by which things can be created or come into existence that do not also take into account the role of God or the divine in those um, uh, in their in their existence or creation. And so, for Father Rose, his his objection to the theory of evolution is that it provides naturalistic explanations for what has been classically defined by the Church Fathers as def- divine action. And so in, in, in so Rose's position here, uh, there's a little bit of a conflation between uh, the theory of evolution as a natural mechanism and uh, the theory of evolution as philosophical naturalism or materialism. Uh, the theory of evolution itself does not say that the only thing that exists is the physical natural world or the material world and that there is no supernatural world. There, God plays no role in the development of species and organisms uh, over time. The theory of evolution has nothing to say about the role of the divine or the supernatural. In fact, it doesn't even have anything to say about its existence or whether it exists or not. But for Rose, what he saw was the problem, a major contradiction between a natural mechanism, the theory of evolution, and uh, divine action. And so for him to embrace evolution is to deny inherently the existence of God and the role that God plays in the creation of evolution organisms. This is not a majority position by any, by, by any means within Eastern Orthodox tradition. Um, there are many Eastern Orthodox people who do take this position, but there are many who don't. And so I don't think it's, it's, uh, it's fair to either side, really, to sort of uh, take this as the representative position of Eastern, or- of Eastern Orthodoxy. Um, one of the main objections to this position is that it doesn't actually, uh, th- that, that the theory of evolution is incompatible with, with Eastern, or- Eastern Orthodox theology, is that it's mostly based on non-Eastern Orthodox style of thinking. Um, and I found this to be particularly interesting in, 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 in my reading of, of Eastern Orthodoxy and the response, the historical response by the Eastern Orthodox Church to evolution, is that they, uh, the, the objection from compatibilists to incompatibilism is that they say that these are mostly Western arguments against the theory of evolution. 
And these are not consistent with the historical Eastern position on uh, the understanding of, of the compatibility between um, natural, the natural world and, and the supernatural world. And so one of the major objections to incompatibilism within Eastern Orthodoxy is that to, 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 to arrive at the conclusion that evolution by natural selection is incompatible with Eastern Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox theology or incompatible with God as creator is that it's not, you don't arrive at that conclusion through an Eastern way of thinking. You arrive at that from a very Western way of thinking. And so um, this is why many, many Eastern Orthodox reject incompatibilism because they say it's not very consistent with within uh, the Eastern way of, uh, of arriving at, at, at good theology. So the second position then, uh, as I mentioned, is compatibilism. <clears throat> this is the view that the theory of evolution by natural selection is compatible with Eastern Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox theology and with the idea of the existence of um, of God, and one of the one of the biggest uh, uh, proponents of this position uh, is Father George uh, Nikosin, and and he writes uh, in favor of of that compatibility. And one of the the kind of the main ideas for this, he draws on the Church Fathers as well, um, but he essentially argues for uh, a compatibility on the basis of narratives. And, and, I, and what he says is that the theory of evolution by natural selection is, is a scientific theory that is, uh, that is also a, a type of narrative that explains, from a scientific perspective, how life evolves and changes over time on the earth in the physical world and in the physical universe. And so that's a narrative of how uh, life is progressing in the physical realm. But this is also consistent with the, the scriptural um, narrative, which gives us the, super, the, or the, the, the supernatural or the spiritual narrative of what's happening. Now, for, for Nikosison, this is important because um, he draws a little bit on, um, on, a, on a church father, Isaac the Syrian, and uh, who, who sees scripture as this super narrative, the spiritual narrative, that's a higher narrative. <clears throat> so the spiritual narratives are, are, are true. The physical narratives are true. But the spiritual narratives are, are of a higher or more weighty truth than, than the simple physical ones. The physical truth, is, uh, truths about the physical world are seen as weaker or lower forms of truth. Spiritual truths are seen as higher forms of truth. And so um, for Nikosison, what he can see as compatible is that the theory of evolution is a lower, weaker narrative for explaining simply just the natural world. But if we want to get behind that and get to the deeper or the higher truth and meaning of, of uh, or, or a higher, deeper narrative, then what's important is to follow the narrative of Scripture and see the unfolding narrative of, of what's what's really truly going on. Um, and so for, for the compatibilist position, they see the narrative of nature or the narrative of evolution as compatible with the narrative of scripture. The narrative of evolution is a lower, uh, less meaningful uh, or weaker form of a narrative of truth. And the, the higher form, the stronger narrative is through is what we learn through the scriptures. And so, but these two narratives don't contradict each other. They are narratives that run side by side to each other. Or really, I guess you could say one on top of the other if you're talking about deeper meaning. So you have the, the lower narrative of evolution, and then above that is running the narrative of scripture, which interprets and makes sense of the narrative of evolution. And so for compatibilists, there's no contradiction here. There's no reason to see these as incompatible. They're simply different forms of narratives that, um, that are taken by uh, by the physical and the and the supernatural worlds, and so that is sort of just a quick overview of the of the of the Eastern Orthodox positions on the theory of evolution versus um, uh, the idea of divine action or God being the creator. Uh, there there are there are people in both camps and within Eastern Orthodoxy 
Uh, there's incompatibilists, incompatibilists. I don't really know that either one truly defines the Eastern, the Eastern Orthodox response, though I, I, from my readings, I, I kind of get the impression that the compatibilist position seems to be the majority position. How much of a majority? I, I don't know. I couldn't really say. But there does seem to be a, more of an acceptance and a compatibilist mentality and approach to the theory of evolution within Eastern Orthodoxy than incompatibilism. And so... Um, I think I think it's important for us uh, to to point that out. So that's our podcast for today. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you uh, enjoyed that episode. If you have a question or if there are any uh, Eastern Orthodox viewers out there who want to weigh in with some uh, comments or suggestions or have co- further questions, you can send us an email. Our email address is scienceandfaithdortmund at gmail. Dot com, or you can visit our website. We're going to be running some articles and uh, make some resources, other resources available if you're interested. Our website address is scienceandfaith.de. Go ahead and check that out. And um, thanks so much for tuning in today, and we'll see you next time.